Now we will look into variable length subnet masking, VLSM. In traditional subnetting, every subnet was the same size and all accommodated the same number of hosts. If all the subnets have the same requirement for the number of hosts, these fixed size address blocks would be sufficient. For example, in this particular diagram that you see on the slide, how many subnets are required? Because each building has its own requirement for the number of hosts. So seven subnets are required, four of the, you know, the different LANs, which are the different buildings, A, B, C, D, and then three subnets, which is, you know, between the routers, router R1 and R2, one subnet, router R2 and R3, another subnet, and router R3 and R4 is going to have the third subnet. So total seven subnets we will be needing, and every subnet is going to have a variable number of hosts in it. So to meet the host requirement of the largest LAN, which is building D, we could borrow three bits to create eight subnets of 30 hosts each. Basically calculate uh, how did I come up with this uh, 30 host and then, you know, the eight subnets if I borrow three bits. But it also wastes addresses on the point-to-point -point links that there are between the routers and also limit the future growth by reducing the total number of subnets available. So how to basically, you know, avoid or uh, overcome this situation. So we are going to subnet a subnet using variable length subnet mask, VLSM. So first, VLSM basically allows a network space to be divided in unequal parts. So now you can have, you know, variable size uh, subnet masks, subnet addresses, subnet IDs. Also with VLSM, the subnet mask will vary depending upon how many bits have been borrowed uh, from the host part or, upon, or a particular subnet. And also VLSM enables a network number to be configured with different subnet masks on different interfaces. And it also, it also allows for more hierarchical levels within an addressing plan. And this allows for better route summarization. So now let's look into a particular example of a VLSM. So in this slide, so the four LANs, they can be easily accommodated using a slash 27 subnet mask. So this would create subnets with increments of 32. I mean, in each subnet, you're going to have 32 hosts. So as you can see uh, on the slide, so this particular, uh, you know, pie uh, has eight slices, which means eight subnets. And in each subnet, you can have around 30 hosts. Uh, well, it can accommodate up to 32. But since we already, you know, have learned that uh, we have to subtract you know, two numbers from the total possible number of hosts that you can have in a subnet because of the all zeros and all ones uh, part of the of the subnet. So 30 hosts in each subnet. And in this uh, slide, you can also see the ranges of those uh, host addresses that you can have in each subnet. Also, building A is going to have the, the subnet ID 192.168.20.0 27 and uh, uh, building B is going to have uh, the subnet ID uh, dot 32 and building C dot 64 and building D is going to have the subnet ID dot 96. And in the bottom of the slide, you see the, uh, you know, the IP addresses assigned in, in also in binary format, the number of bits that we have used in the host part for creating the subnet. So, so only the, you know, the first four uh, subnet IDs are going to be used and the remaining uh, four subnet IDs will be unused in this particular example. Okay, so now the WAN interfaces of the routers are assigned the IP addresses and mask for slash 30 subnets. Basically, uh, as you can see uh, from the diagram on the slide, we need three more subnets. The four subnets we have already uh, created which basically are of each building. Now we need three subnets uh, for the WAN interfaces of the routers. 
and we are going to basically borrow three bits uh, from the subnet 7 um, in the total eight subnets we created so we're going to borrow three bits from subnet 7 and as you can see on the slide so the first three uh, bit is going to be the seventh subnet uh, represent the seventh subnet and then we, we have borrowed another three bits uh, from the host portion uh, to basically create uh, you know the three subnets that we need uh, for the WAN interfaces. So uh, the last subnet is subnet into slash 30 subnets to accommodate the WAN interfaces and also this uh, pie chart also tells you that the last subnet basically is divided into eight subnets of subnets and only the first three uh, subnet of subnets are going to be used and the remaining uh, subnets uh, will be unused. So now let's see how we are going to configure, you know, the router interfaces, of, uh, give them the subnet IDs. So the gigabit internet uh, IP address is going to be 192.168.20.1. And then uh, the, uh, the serial interface is going to be uh, 192.168.20.255. That 255 is going to be the first host address, which we have already discussed that this host address is usually given to the router interface or the gateway router. Now coming back to R2, the interface which is connected to the LAN segment, that, that interface is, going, uh, you know, is given or is configured the IP address 192.168.20.33, which is the first host address of that subnet. And then the serial interface uh, between R2 and R1 that interface is given the IP address uh, dot twenty dot two twenty six because two twenty five was already given to the other end of the R one and this uh, the other serial interface which is connected to the uh, router three that interface basically is given the IP address dot two twenty nine now the third R three router has the uh, you know the, uh, been configured the same way as R two. The LAN segment has given the, you know, the IP address dot 65. The serial interface is given the IP address dot 230. And also the other serial interface, which is connected to R4, is given the interface dot 233. Because that subnet has, is the, has the address 232. And the first host address is going to be dot 233, which is given to this serial interface. And now the, the fourth router is given the LAN segment interface is given the IP address dot 97 and the serial interface is uh, given the IP address dot 234 because dot 233 has already been given to the one of the interfaces of router R3 which belongs to the same subnet dot 232. So we basically uh, discussed uh, the basics of uh, variable length uh, subnet masking. And also we basically, you know, looked into uh, and also went through one example of, uh, of uh, how we can create subnets within a subnet uh, in order to uh, save the address space and, you know, uh, uh, make it more efficient in terms of uh, route summarization.